suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today, but terrorists tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. NTA, you can't be Dutch. I see the wisdom in your eyes, Mama, and I feel the courage in your heart. You carry strength in your walk, Papa, and compassion in your touch. I see the love in your smile, my sister, and I hear the truth when you talk. You are a winner with your brain, my brother, and a healer with your soul. I see the future in your hands, Niger, when you register and vote. We get power inside us, my friend, but not be power for our fists. This is not power of how to use our head and come together. So stand up. No, we don't sit down and look. To Baba say so. No, sit down and look. No, sit down look. No, sit down and look. No, sit down and look. No, sit down and look. Issues in the sports sector remain one of the most debated among Nigerians due to the passion, followership, government involvement, impact on Nigeria's external image and our national life in the sports parliament. The NTA offers Nigerians deep views on issues with experts in the sports sector offering in-depth analysis, hindsight, insight and foresight towards elevating Nigerian sports to the zenith on the floor of the sports parliament. So many things have been wrong in sports. Uh, we've been talking around it. We need performance expertise. And you can only get some of these where you have world-class facilities. How can sports deliver return of investment to attract the kind of money required to take it to the next level? We cannot interfere in the internal affairs of even the federations that belong to us. Sports Parliament, a unique platform for sports discussions, showing live on the NTA, Thursdays at 11 p.m. Keep a day with the parliamentarians. The eyes have it. watching NTA Nigerian Television Authority For more information and news updates visit our website at www.nta.ng or you can follow us on Twitter at NTA News Now or you can like us on Facebook at NTA Network News Stay connected on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash NTA News Online Watch our live stream at www.nta.ng slash live NTA You can't beat the rich
against measures possible to punish perpetrators of these crimes. President Muhammad Buhari pays condolence visit to Kaduna, promises that perpetrators will not go unpunished. The tools deployed in particular along Gubia Road and the Bibliothek General, the Madari Secondary School, who are begging for food to survive. Information and Culture Minister debunks insinuation of unfavorable working condition of Nigerian troops. International community can be assured that they will not be found wanting. International communities satisfied with INEX preparations for 2019 elections in Nigeria. And Nigeria's sports book records debut in Abuja. Hello and welcome to NTA Network News with me, Joy Osiago in Abuja. Michael Olaleye is in Lagos and Vivian Eziadife joins us from Port Harcourt. President Muhammad Buhari has vowed to ensure that all those responsible directly or indirectly for the latest violence in Kaduna and other parts of the country are fished out and dealt with decisively. This was while addressing traditional rulers, religious and political leaders, as well as all the stakeholders in Kajuna during a condolence visit. The president also read a riot act to law enforcement agencies, especially the Nigerian police, warning that laxity will no longer be condoned. State House correspondent Adam Sambu has the report. Kaduna is at the moment under a drugs to down curfew imposed by the state government as people continue to mourn after the latest killings in the area. The mood in the city notwithstanding, thousands of the inhabitants line up the major streets to welcome President Muhammad Buhari as he arrived to identify with them at this trying moment. The Nigerian leader was, however, more concerned about the restoration of sustainable peace in Kaduna and other parts of the country, saying the wanton killings must stop. The federal security agencies will hunt and prosecute all those who sponsor these acts of violence. The federal government will take strongest measures possible to punish perpetrators of these crimes, if in the past they got away scot-free, we shall now hold everyone to account for these latest killings. The president said more security assets are to be recruited and deployed across Nigeria towards ensuring that citizens are protected while going about their lawful businesses as well as to reinforce the authority of the government. Let it be clear to all that individuals and communities have obligation to comply with the law and uphold peace. These obligations include respecting the rights of others to worship freely and to assure lawful livelihoods anywhere in this country. We are doing our best to develop human capital and address poverty and inequality in all parts of the country. While warning community leaders against shielding criminal elements in their domains, President Buhari also directed the Nigeria police to remain vigilant in securing communities, saying laxity will no longer be condoned. From now onwards, the Nigerian police will better watch it. I'm going to watch you closer. President Buhari, who paid tribute to the late Agum Adara, Dr. Maiwada Galadima, whom he eulogized for serving his chiefdom with dedication, promised to revisit the issue of compensation and resettlement of victims of the 2011 post-election violence. Governor Nasser Ahmed El Rufai, who commended President Buhari for tremendously supporting efforts at maintaining peace and security in the state, said what they are now battling in Kaduna is the legacy of nearly 40 years of violence and impunity. He, however, said during the latest incidents where more than 70 people lost their lives, Christians and Muslims were seen giving refuge to each other in moments of peril, indicating that at last the forces of peace and order will prevail. 
our communities should reject and marginalize the few criminal elements that indulge in violence. Let there be a resolve to deny criminals any hiding place. Let no criminal be allowed to find succor in tribe or faith. Both the Emir of Zazau, Alhaji Shehu Idris, and the representatives of Muslim and Christian communities in Kaduna State were full of appreciation to Governor El Rufai for the way and manner he responded to the crisis which they described as unfortunate and regrettable. The religious leaders should preach peace, love, unity, and tolerance. We condemn all the killings that have been going on. I will condemn the attitude of those who are responsible. We are for peace and will continue to advance the, the cause for peace. President Muhammad Buhari has since returned to Abuja. In Abuja, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And from Kaduna, we move to Niger State. Now, as part of efforts to strengthen the already existing peace among farmers and herders in Niger State, a 30,000-hectare grazing reserve in Bobi is being resuscitated with an initial investment of 200 million naira. This is the outcome of a stakeholders' meeting between the governor and various Fulani groups in the state. Dauda Muhammad completes the story. This enlarged stakeholders peace meeting organized by the Office of the Director General, Nomadic Affairs, Niger State Governor's Office, is one of the many measures adopted to dialogue with the different Flani clans as part of efforts aimed at mitigating misunderstanding and misconception over the farmers' headers clash. Various Flani leaders and officials of the social cultural group met Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, including the national president, Ardo Mohamed Kiru Azuru identified lack of grazing fields and routes, nomadic schools as well as health facilities are some of the challenges facing the Fulanese. They pledged to ensure that all their members cooperate with security agencies in exposing bad elements among them. So in the past six, uh, six seven months now, we don't have any clashes between farmers and herders. This one is a very welcome development in, in Niger Sen. We want uh, order state to emulate from nature state especially the noble neighboring state like Soktos and Farakebi. please they should come and see what we're doing in nature state so they can help us we put our heads together niger state governor abubakar sani bello while tracing the root cause of some of the problems within the Fulani ranks identified lack of education and drugs as the main challenges adding that the bobby grazing reserve when fully operational will address most issues raised during the meeting most of their concerns will be addressed uh, within the Bobi Grazing Reserve. So uh, it's mostly around uh, education, uh, veterinary services, uh, pasture for their cattle. Naja said has 21 sites identified for grazing reserves, with only two being developed in Mina, Dawda Mohammed. And still focusing on security matters, the Federal Capital Territory Police Command has arrested 400 members of the El Zazaki Islami Movement of Nigeria with 31 bottles of petrol bombs and other dangerous weapons. In a press briefing, Commissioner of Police Federal Capital Territory Balak Chiruma said the group without provocation went on rampage and burnt down a police rapid response squad patrol vehicle deployed at Ademola Adetokumbo Crescent in Abuja. Security correspondent Sefia Neoma Uche reports. Police operatives on stop and search duty along Tipa Garage Katampe arrested one Mustafa Abdullahi, age 20, with 18 bottles of petrol bombs concealed in a traveling bag. To cause mayhem and attack innocent citizens, including law enforcement agents deployed to protect lives and properties. He ran out of luck when vigilant policemen on duty at, point, at the point upon reasonable suspicion intercepted the cab, conducted a stop uh, search on the only bag in the car which had in it the improvised bomb devices. The suspect will be arraigned in court as soon as con uh, investigation is concluded. One of the El Zazaki members spoke to NTA News. I just want to defend myself with this thing that 
police catch me with it. The police command, which says it will not tolerate breakdown of law and order, advised members of the Ezazaki to avoid attacking innocent citizens, including law enforcement agents deployed to protect lives and property while assuring FCT residents of its continuous efforts to protect lives and property of residents of the FCT. The command urged them to report any suspicious movement in their areas to law enforcement agents. Sophia Noma Uchi, NTA News. In the meantime, the Nigerian army has cleared the air on the number of casualties following the provoked encounter with the Shite sect on Monday at Kubo and Karu Bridge Junction. A statement on its website said three members of the sect died while four soldiers sustained injuries during the encounter. The sect members yesterday attacked troops deployed at a checkpoint along the route and tried to force their way into the city centre. They threw canisters with fuel, stones and dangerous weapons which were repelled by the army. Moving on now to other issues, President Mohamed Buhari this Tuesday granted audience to the governors from the south-south geopolitical zone of the country. State House correspondent Adam Sabu Sambo reports that the governors of Rivers, Bielsa, Delta and Aquibom states met the president behind closed doors. Details of the discussions, which lasted about an hour, were not made public, but NTA News learned it might not be unconnected with the recent ruling by the Supreme Court on the oil-bearing states of Niger Delta. Rivers, Bielsa and Aquibom states had approached the nation's apex court for the interpretation of Section 16, Subsection 1 of the Constitution relating to the deep offshore and inland basin production sharing contract. The section mandated the federal government to adjust the shares of the revenue accruable to the Federation whenever the price of crude oil exceeded $20 per barrel, which confronted, when confronted by journalists after the meeting, Governor Syriaki Dixon neither confirmed nor denied discussing the matter with the president. To discuss issues that are um, pertinent to our country and also pertinent to our respective states. Um, and we had, I think, a robust and fruitful discussion with the president and he promised uh, to look into it in any way uh, possible. Thank you very much. So, what, what area? What area? No, no, we don't want to go into those details. Thank you. Now, the controversy trailing the part to suspend chief executive officers of government agencies by their boards has been finally laid to rest with the pronouncement by the secretary to the government of the Federation, Bas Mustafa. Experts have again corroborated this saying. Such powers do not reside with the boards. Emmanuel Anyemiru, following the development, now reports. The relationship between some board members and chief executive officers of government agencies and prostators have led to disruption of industrial peace over who has passed to suspend an appointee. Recently, the National Health Insurance Scheme was embroiled in such controversy. In a recent workshop at the instance of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, for recent appointees of government, he made it clear. Governing boards do not have the powers to suspend or remove a chief executive appointed by the president without recourse to due process. You might, however, investigate wrongdoings and make your recommendations to government through the supervisory ministries. This has been corroborated by legal opinions. The appointment, removal and suspension is based on the appointee of that council. Who is that appointee in this instance? It is Mr. President. Who doesn't even exercise that power a la carte? He does it on the recommendation of the minister. If all of them are ready to play by the rule, we will have no problem in, in, in this situation because the laws are deliberately made in such a way so that uh, there must be checks and balances. Do workers have powers to enforce such orders where it exists? It does not lie in the staffers to say they are going to enforce that removal. 
or enforce the suspension. Emmanuel Ayimiro, NT News. And for a bid on the 2019 polls, the prospects for credible elections in 2019 in Nigeria are high as the Joint Committee of the United Nations, African Union and ECOWAS gave an in-depth assessment on INEX plans for 2019 elections. This was during our visit to INEC office in Abuja, Mayor Ugidi reports. The strategic position of Nigeria always attracts global attention on critical national issues and the 2019 election is another crux of the matter in global affairs with Nigeria in the center stage. In this respect, global, regional and sub-regional bodies are leaving nothing to chance in ensuring credible pools for Nigeria. As for some time now, a joint committee of the United Nations African Union and ECOWAS has been interacting with security chiefs, the executive and other interest groups on election matters. And the outcomes indicate that Nigeria is on the move to record another success, yet in a democratic transition. This is indicative of the fact that a government is all out to attain this feat again with dogged commitment. And we had the honor and the privilege yesterday to be received by His Excellency, Muhammad Buhari, assured us of his determination as Chairman of ECOWAS and of course President of the Federal Republic to do all within his powers to ensure that credible, transparent, free and fair elections are conducted in issue-based campaign and as executive uh, we can be assured, the international community can be assured that they will not be found wanting. What of the electoral umpire itself, the independent National Electoral Commission? INEC is working very closely with political parties to open the space for the inclusion of young people to participate in the election. More consultations for the realization of this are still ongoing. Mir Okidi, NT News. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari has congratulated Mr. Jeb Bolsonaro on his victory in Brazil's presidential election runoff on Sunday. A statement signed by senior media, senior media advisor Garba Shehu says the president also felicitates with the people of Brazil for successfully going through the two rounds of elections and making their choice. President Buhari says his administration looks forward to deepening historical and cultural relations with Brazil as well as expanding current political, trade and military ties with the South American powerhouse. As president-elect Bolsonaro takes office in January 2019. The Nigerian leader wishes him a successful tenure. Now time to take a break. The news continues shortly. Hello, Niger. It's a beautiful day. And now it's time for some amazing music. Don't go anywhere, because we'll be right back. Who is it? What are you searching for? With Glow Yakata, for every recharge, they'll give you 22 times the amount to call all the networks. What? So if I load 100 Naira, they will give me 2,200 Naira? Exactly! And that's not all. They are also giving up to 6 gigabytes of data every month for 6 whole months. Wow! That's incredible! Yes! Are you sure? 22 times on every recharge? Yup. Found it! Found it! That's it! Yes! Get up to 6 gigabytes of data every month for 6 months and 2,200 Naira bonus for every 100 Naira recharge. The call all networks where talkers and browsers live. The largest data network, Glow, Grandmasters of Data. Yeah, hello. Hi, Jenny. Can you supply 1,000 bottles of juice by noon? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, bye. Hello? One day, I go go any store and say I want everything. <sighs> Jenny, Auntie, please, I need a loan. One day, one day, anything I want, Hurry I'll up. get it times two. Someday, I'll be living Hello? 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 Hello?
Are you an entrepreneur looking for financing to grow a business? I have good news for you. Development Bank of Nigeria now provides sustainable financing through commercial banks, microfinance banks, and other financial institutions with repayment terms of up to 10 years. Please do remember, pay back your loan in good time. We'll give you access to more loans. Development Bank of Nigeria. Financing sustainable growth. Who am I? I'm a caregiver. A slayer. Give them. A boss lady. A foodie. I am the chief quality inspector and chief organizer. And when I'm cooking with my Maggie star, I become a kitchen grand master. Every day, you choose to make the difference. That's why you choose Maggie Star, made from natural soya beans and the other carefully selected ingredients to help you cook the difference. I am the chief enjoyment officer and I'm the magnet that brings my family together. Need I say more? <laughs> but best of all, I love what I do. With Maggie, cook the difference. Recharging on Airtel Recharge Plus. Dial star 479 hash to know more. Airtel, the smartphone network. Thanks for staying with us. Governors have agreed to pay a national minimum wage of 22,500 naira. The governors arrived at the decision after the meeting, which ended Tuesday evening in Abuja. The chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, Abdulaziz Yari Abubakar of Zamfara State, announced this decision. The governors said they arrived at the decision in the overall interest of the workers and the economy. Meanwhile, members of the organized labor today in Abuja staged a sensitization march for its members over the new minimum wage. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has described an online publication alleging that Nigerian troops in the Northeast are operating under a deplorable condition as a classic example of fake news. The minister debunked the allegation at a media briefing in Abuja. Anthony Forson reports. Barely two months ago, when the federal government launched a national campaign against fake news, the Information and Culture Minister, Laya Mohamed, warned that purveyors of fake news should cease from such acts. The latest is contained in an online publication which published a story that members of the Special Force Unit in the theater of operation deployed live under deplorable condition. The troops deployed in particular along Gubia Road and the Brigadier General Mimadari Secondary School were begging for food to survive. Were poorly treated with some, some of them wearing sleepers and were facing irregular short payment of the allowances. With this, Lai Mohammed said President Muhammad Buhari immediately ordered for an investigation, which eventually turned out to be false. The troops in question deployed at the Brigadier General Emanuel Secondary School along Gubi Road have been fed centrally three times a day and are treated immediately after their training before they are deployed in the theater. 
how then can soldiers who are fed centrally be starving or begging for food? Consigned payment of allowances, the monthly allowances of troops of the AFSL battalion have been paid directly into their various accounts from the defense headquarters. The minister maintained that the publisher has exhibited poor understanding of what obtains in the theater of military operations. He warned that engaging in fake publication about the Nigerian troops is not only a great disservice to the nation, but a great downplay of the kind of sacrifice being made by the gallant troops in fighting the insurgency. Lai Mohammed maintained that the federal government is not in any way attempting to gag the media, but the media itself, on the other hand, should exhibit a high sense of professionalism in Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. Turning to education matters now, members of the public have supported the proposed establishment of new federal polytechnics in Daura Katsina and Ikom Cross River states. During the public hearing convened by the Senate Committee on Tertiary Education and TED Fund, the bill for the establishment of Federal University of Education Aguleri Anambra State also received wide acceptance. National Assembly correspondent Ignatio Zungwo reports. Senate Committee on Tertiary Education and TED Fund met with stakeholders and the indigents of Daura in Katsina State. Aguleri in Anambra State, Uromi Edo State, and Ekom in Cross River State. It was a public hearing that represents a unique synergy towards enhancing education in Nigeria. An avenue to seek more input in the bills seeking to establish federal polytechnics in Daura, Katsina State, initiated by late Senator Mustafa Bukal and presently sponsored by Senator Ahmed Baba Keita, and another one in Ekom Cross River State, sponsored by Senator John Eno. For the indigents, the bills are critical legislative intervention. It will amaze you that Dora does not have any parallel presence in terms of any institution in, in Nigeria. And good people of the places, and Dora in particular, we support this bill and reserve the bill. It's a little bit uh, out of place that up till now, the Congress doesn't have a higher institution. Okay. A lot of people agree to benefit from this group. The groups from Anambra and Edo State made their submissions on the bill for the establishment of Federal University of Education at Guleri, Anambra State, sponsored by Senator Victor Ume, and the one seeking to give legal backing to the already existing National Institute of Construction Technology and Management, Uromi, in Edo State, sponsored by Senator Clifford Odia. The enactment of this bill will help transforming the educational fortunes of this country. Many subjects, especially 34 trade subjects that have been recently introduced, we don't have teachers. This institution is already, it's already in operation. Our duty is just to provide a gap back here. Senator Flip Aduda represented the Senate President. That the Senate remains committed to transforming the educational sector through lawmaking function. And on the position of the Senate, in ensuring the fees of this magnitude are subjected to public hearings. The bills now await third reading from the National Assembly Ignatius before NTN. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari says the Nigerian Army University view will serve as a brain box that will proactively provide solutions to contemporary challenges confronting the military. The president said this in a message at uh, the groundbreaking and launching of the Green Initiative by the Nigerian Army in Bil Borno State. Ismail Musa has the details. In March 2018, the Federal Executive Council approved the establishment of the Nigerian Army University Bill, a unique institution in sub-Saharan Africa and its Green Initiative program. University one fully operational shall venture into various fields of specialization, including those not available in any Nigerian university at the moment. Some of these areas include artificial intelligence, weapons and armament technology, welding engineering, nanotechnology, 
and robotics technology. The test of credibility of the Nigerian army when supported by the university will therefore not only rely on its capability and capacity to execute legal violence in defending and securing the Nigerian nation, but also its ability to contribute to her equipment replenishment, which will add to national economic and security development. And the beauty of this university is that 75% of the intake of the university are civilians to be complemented with 25% from the Nigerian Army and paramilitary institutions. A geophysical survey study has been concluded to ensure adequate water supply to the university and interview. From Biu in Borno State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. And from education, we turn to stories from the energy sector. Now, to bridge the medium-term gas supply by 2020, the federal government will deliver about 3.4 billion standard cubic feet of gas daily. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachuku, gave the assurance at the 2018 graduation of Petroleum Training Institute, Efron Delta State. Austin Edemodo reports. It is estimated that Nigeria has 36 billion oil reserves with estimated daily production of 3 million barrels, while gas reserves stand at 5 trillion cubic meters. As Nigeria aspires to maximize food production capacity and its value chain, the expertise of these graduates could be of great assets to the nation. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Ibe Kachiku, therefore said the federal government has decided to invest in the seven critical gas development projects to achieve the feat in 2020. It is our desire that after the review, the institute will be expanded to take on additional responsibilities towards meeting the targets of President Muhammad Buhari's administration. Principal actors in the industry also challenged the graduates to bring their wealth of knowledge to bear in innovative and standardized operational goals in the oil and gas industry. As you enter the real world, guard your lives and prepare for another phase of arduous journey. 1,086 students with specialities in petroleum technology and research graduated from the institute in 2018. I'm Austin Edemodo, NTA News. A major petroleum product pipeline said to be dormant for about 16 years is fingered to be the cause of fire that engulfed some neighboring communities. Now, the question the Senate Joint Committee on a fact-finding visit to the affected area is asking is, how could a pipe that carries no product cause fire? National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Amino reports. It is completely a new angle to the public understanding on the alleged petroleum fire that claimed many lives in Ibia State. The two affected sounds are Umaimo and Opokorwala in Osisioma, local government area of the state. How come in product? Why did you allow NNPC to be surcharging you? If you are not part of this syndicate. You know, the products have been moving on this line. Where is it going to? This discovery shows that there is actually no dormant pipe among the two lines from Port Harcourt refinery to Inugu as it is made public. The senators proceeded to the Nigerian Pipeline and Storage Company, NPSC, for further clarification. Sometime in December 20, 2006, that was the last time it was used. But there is product on that line. And whenever there is vandalism on the line, there will be, pro there will be product coming out. We didn't go there to explain for one day, but you are here telling us to believe you that we are bad who are vandalized. And what baffles the committee most is the fact that uh, this leakage happens on the dormant line. Ibia State Governor Okeze Victor Ipezu advised the committee to consider all problems enumerated by the communities and the committee chairman, Senator Kabir Marafa, said investigation continues on the submissions. Abdullahi Aminu, NTA News. Let's now join Michael in Lagos for more reports. Hello, Michael. Hello, Joy, and welcome to Lagos. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshimbaju has been attending the Nigerian Arts Summit holding in Lagos.
correspondent Muhammad Abdul Kadri reports that the art summit is celebrating contemporary African art. On arrival, the vice president embarked on a guided tour of exhibitions. He then mounted the stage to speak about the huge investment the present administration is making in enhancing the creative sector. He said the Empower program is also providing opportunities for young persons to get involved in creative industry with focus on animation, design, performing arts, and publishing. Art is known to be one of the fastest growing sectors of the Nigeria's economy, and the vice president says the present administration is providing enabling environment for the sector to thrive. Art Summit Nigeria is an annual platform for stimulating crossings between art and technology by bringing a wide range of social actors and factors to assess and plan the future for Africa's creative industry. In Lagos, Muhammad Abdel Kadri, NTA News. The Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, has introduced a value monitoring benchmarking digital platform to promote transparency in the industry. Director DPR Modekaya Ladan said the platform will facilitate a seamless upload, operating companies' data to track transparency. Abola de Salami reports. Stakeholders' engagement afforded industry players and the regulatory body an avenue to promote accountability through cost evaluation and benchmarking assets. Director of the Department of Petroleum Resources, Modekaya Ladan, represented by former head upstream partner Selly said the value monitoring benchmarking digital platform will help identify the critical gaps that have impeded efficiency and accountability in the industry. government to unravel the mystery of high costs in exploration and the product of petroleum resources, as well as the department resolved to provide a robust digital platform capable of accommodating asset development and stimulate industry competitiveness. Stakeholders say resulted in the value monitoring, benchmarking and physical payment administration system. stakeholders the opportunity to register their companies, upload their budgets, post data, yearly results, and monthly production data. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. The Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board and the Indigenous Petroleum Producers Group have signed an agreement. This will facilitate compliance with the provisions of the Nigerian Content Act and timely approvals to documents. Lineke witnessed the signing ceremony and reports. Long contracting oil circle and protected reform in the oil and gas are two major challenges that have hindered investment in the oil and gas sector. This has necessitated the need for partnership between the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board and the Indigenous Petroleum Producers Group. The signing and handover note signifies the commitment of the 25 members of the Indigenous Petroleum Producers Group. IPPG with the Nigerian Content Act and timely approvals of documents. With OPTS, some of the operators have been able to test the SME. And if we can record this with the indigenous uh, producers as well, I think it will boost their confidence and know that uh, regulatory authorities are not incumbent uh, to project execution and their production activities. 
The service level agreement, according to the Executive Secretary, Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, Simbi Wabote, is in furtherance of the board's efforts to meet the targets set by the Minister of State Petroleum, Ibe Kachuku, for the oil and gas industry's contracting cycle to be shortened to six months. This will enhance uh, uh, contractual process. It will also give confidence uh, to most investors that they will not spend two three years in just setting up a simple contract. It will make the projects go faster. We get first production a lot quicker because all the delays we normally have, this SLA will improve them. This initiative is also in line with the President's Executive Order 001, which promotes ease of doing business. A similar agreement was signed between Nigeria liquefied natural gas and oil producers traders section, OPTS. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. You are still watching NTA Network News. More reports are ahead after this timeout. Please stay with us. Amaka, she won. Soap, Ori, shell butter. Airtel, the smartphone network. From our wonderful family, meet our active triplets. Mixology, for example, mixes well with drinks. Then enjoy every quick meal with Slurp It Off. And everywhere you go, there is Gogurt. Packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy. Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness inside and out. Hollandia yogurt, it's all good. You in the air conditioned office with the itchy throat. Strap cells. Go to the spotlight with the raspy throat. Strap cells. You in the pollution. Yes, you. Dry throat. Strap cells. Hello in the downpour with the scratchy throat. Take strap cells. Strap cells, with its soothing medicinal ingredients, will heal the harm done to your throat from external factors. Strap cells. Strap cells. Strap cells. For a dry, itchy, raspy, scratchy throat. Dead in your holidays, and you stand a chance to win your dream holiday. Follow three simple steps to enter. Step one, draw your holiday experience. Step two, snap a picture. Step three, send picture, name and address to the WhatsApp number 0902 588 Hurry, go grab your Indomie packs now. Offer valid till stock last. Terms and conditions supply. Indomie noodles, tasty nutrition. Good for you. Fake news which is shared for malicious purposes is a danger to our peace and security in Nigeria. Misinformation as fake news is a serious threat to our hard-earned democracy and promotes hatred and misunderstanding between our communities. We are all responsible for stopping the spread of fake news in its tracks. So, always check the source and credibility of any news item. Say no to fake news. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Thank you for staying with us on NT Network News. Talking business now, World Bank Group set to unveil 2019 Ease of Doing Business. Let's join Amina Nojim on Business News. We're starting business news today by echoing the words of President of the World Bank Group, Jim Yom Kim, who says there is no getting away from the need to invest much more effectively in health 
and education. Now looking at the challenges in terms of increasing resources for infrastructure and the need to increase investment in human capital. The Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed says Nigeria is looking much more seriously at how it will improve its domestic resource mobilization. What is clear is that since this administration we have been increasing steadily both the budgets for health as well as for finance. We clearly know that investing in education and health is an economic investment. It's not just a social investment. In other business news, financial experts are advising the federal government to pay more attention to multiple taxation in the country. They are equally appealing to government to harmonize tax laws at all government levels to reduce the burden and sustain investment flows into Nigeria advocate for what we call the consolidated tax law in which the state and the local government will have a single tax court which identify a state and local government revenue officer to be an officer of the same agency. And from the equities market, the twin gauges lost team over Monday's figures to record depreciation of 0.08%. 309 million equities swapped hands in 3,418 deals valued at 5.994 billion naira. The financial services led the activity chart, which was stopped by Guarantee Trust Bank, Sterling Bank and FCMB. Presco, Stambic and Diamond Bank topped the gainers table, while Mayor, Dangote Fla and Regal Insurance led the losers table. Lastly, the World Bank will tomorrow, Wednesday, release the 2019 Ease of Doing Business Ranking. Nigeria jumped 24 places in the one for 2018, indicating improvement in the nation's investment environment. Now that's a wrap on Business News. I am Amina Nujain. As Nigeria focuses on producing and promoting made in Nigeria products to create wealth and employment, corporate individuals are keen to that vision. The latest being the West African Ceramics Limited, which opened a showroom in Makudi, the Benue State capital, with a view to creating affordable building materials without losing quality. Everyang Solomon reports that the showroom has created close to 2,000 jobs in the state. The Royal Exclusive Showroom is located along Atonkwera Road, another business area within the Makudi metropolis. The initiative is a dealer partnership program which is aimed at strengthening, training and providing affordable made in Nigeria ties and allied products that level the gap between builders and users without losing qualities. Partnership viewing Makudi as an agro-industrial region and settlement of largely middle class earners who mostly depend on agriculture needed affordable housing. Hence the siting of the project in the Benue State capital Makudi. The general manager of West Africa Ceramics Limited, Bashar Rao, says the company has so far employed 1,600 youth to strengthen the workforce. The main focus is the all raw material available in this country. We have the raw material resources on our own, mining section, and always we will look for innovation. Some of the guests at the occasion says it will help boost the economy of the state, which before was termed as civil servant state due to lack of industrial establishment. This is what other upcoming companies show relate. The program which took off in 2016 has achieved a total of 13 established and operational showrooms across most cities in the country in Makudi. Iveri Solomon, NTA News. And on that pleasant note, we join Vivian in Port Harcourt for more reports. Hello, Vivian. Good evening, Joy, and welcome to Port Harcourt. River State Governor Nye Samwike has redeemed his pledge to compensate traders at the burnt fruit garden market, Port Harcourt, with the handover of bank drafts to victims. Oge Dinyekuri reports that the governor also flagged off the reconstruction of the burnt section of the market. Speaking before presenting the bank drafts to the affected traders, Governor Wike stated that traders with shops got 400,000 naira, while those operating in attachment stores got 300,000 naira each. The governor charged the contractors handling the market reconstruction to ensure that the project is completed within the next three months. We are a government 
that when we make a promise, we fulfill the promise we have made. If you trust your people, if you care for your people, when you tell them something, you must do it. Ebony State Governor. Dave Umahi, who laid the foundation stone for the project, commended Governor Wike for his commitment to the rapid development of River State. Some beneficiaries made some cheerful comments. Governor Wike is a Kweme one of River State. High point of the event was the release of the bank drafts to the benefiting traders by the state governor. Most of suspected criminals, Kelvin Samuel covered the raid and now reports. The raid by the Nigerian Navy ship NNS Jubilee is in compliance with the Federal Government's Directive on Adequate Security of Nigerian Waterways to save the nation from further economic loss. Briefing newsman, the Commander NNS Jubilee, Commodore Ayerinde Akinwale, represented by the Executive Officer Captain Suleiman Ibrahim, says his men received intelligent report regarding smuggling activities at a compound around Eket Oron Road. Eket local government area of Akwaibom State, which resorted to the increase of surveillance around the area. This is said led to the arrest of the suspected criminals. Captain Suleiman said modalities have been put in place to clamp down on those sabotaging the nation's territorial integrity. It's not only an economic crime, but it is also an environmental crime. Items recovered were five pumping machines, three utility vehicles, two lorries, over 80,000 liters of crude oil, 647,000 naira cash, and six suspects were handed over to the main of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps at Kwaibom State for further investigation and prosecution. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, and TA News. That's it from Portakot. It's back to you, Joy, in Abuja. Thank you, Vivian. You're still watching the Network News. We'll take a short break now when we return the last leg of the news. Stay with us. You see, let them come out and tell me one person in APC who has been found wanting. And because he's an APC chieftain, has been asked to go home and say no more. Just one example. Wednesday, 31st October, 1.30 p.m., one on one. On Tuesday Live this week, our focus is on the social intervention program of the federal government. Special advisor to the president on social... Nigeria Sports Book of Records, a 277 compendium of Nigeria's sporting achievements from 1884 to 2017, is a 10-year project undertaken by Nicholas Quanta, Chief Executive Officer, Africa Image. Commending the initiative at the launch of the book in Abuja Tuesday, Minister of Youth and Sports Development Solomon Dalung maintained that Nigeria's sporting industry will thrive better if stakeholders and well-meaning citizens join forces with government at all levels to enhance the sector. Other countries have successfully used sports to enhance their global image and ranking as well as the well-being of their citizens. Nigeria cannot be left out authority.